Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now understand gambling involves great risks. I was wrong in picking Anthony Mundine over Joshua Clotty. The fight did not go remotely close to how I thought it would go, right? Now many people here online have asked me for a post-fight video. Let me just say, I have not seen the full fight as of yet. I have seen highlights and I've posted those highlights in the favorite videos column on my YouTube channel page. I encourage everyone to look at the highlights. Based on what I've seen from the highlights, I don't believe Anthony Mundine is done. I don't believe Anthony Mundine is finished. I still consider Anthony Mundine to be an elite defensive fighter. He has skills. But he clearly lost the fight. Joshua Clotty in my opinion looks better at 154 than he did at 147 and let me say I believe the difference maker in the fight was Joshua Clotty's lead left hook right he hits Mundine with it keep in mind counter punchers are vulnerable early in fights as they figure out the angles right they want to block your shot so they can throw their counter they want to avoid your shot so they can throw their counter right so they have to figure out the angle of your shot and it's always different in the ring than it is on film right there also wasn't a lot of film recent film at least of Clotty over the last four years or so because Clotty has hardly fought during that period of time right it's clear that Mundine who needed to move a bit and pump a jab lost his balance after getting drilled and dropped by some clotty lead left hooks right when you lose your balance early after getting clocked right you might not have the balance to play a stay away distance game I don't believe Mundine's head ever clears in the fight keep in mind Mundine keeps getting off the canvas right it's clear that He's not 100%. Let's give him credit on going the distance. Did he get blown out? Absolutely. Did Joshua Clotty earn that win? Absolutely. Is Clotty a big player at 154? He is, to me, certainly now. But I will say rumors of Anthony Mundine's demise have been greatly exaggerated. Let's just view this fight as a guy getting caught early and unable to have all of his wits for many of the rounds right I'll concede that fight did not go remotely how I thought it would let's talk about a fight that right now has caught my attention that you need to know about right quite frankly I feel this fight might be the higher level chess match on the same boxing card that has champion George, well, excuse me, champion Carl Froch defending his belt against George Groves. In fact, it's possible that both guys in this fight could beat the other two guys in the main event. Right now, everyone knows that I think the world of James DeGale. You know, I've posted on my YouTube channel page a fight that I consider to be a masterpiece. It's the Gale against Dinah Davis, a pretty slick boxer. And what I want you to do, you know, you've heard me here online talk about coming in at a side profile, using angles, and using head movement to literally make your head hard to hit, to make you in the ring hard to find. Right? In my opinion, it really doesn't get better than the angles and the head movement set up by James DeGale 
against Dinah Davis. Right? But I want to see a guy who knows what he's doing in the ring, who can hide his body and who is just excellent at being creative with the angles. I look at James the Gale videos. Right? But understand a ringer when you see one let's talk about James the Gale's opponent let me just say even though I think the world of James the Gale even though I expect James the Gale to win this fight right I'm hesitant to bet on the fight in fact, I believe the value play is actually with his opponent, Brandon Gonzalez. Now let's talk about Brandon Gonzalez. You know, Brandon Gonzalez has been sparring for years with someone you may have heard about. A guy named Andre Ward. Right? And let's just say Brandon Gonzalez, who is unbeaten, who many believe beat Thomas Ustaisen right Brandon Gonzalez is the kind of fighter who is clearly a student of the game he has head movement too he can fight inside dare I say in my opinion he fights inside better than both Frotch and George Groves right now boxing has many kinds of people you have the folks we all know about, right? The champs who are out signing autographs, who when you see them at a fight ringside, you say, hey, there's so-and-so watching this fight from ringside. But then you have a whole group of hungry fighters who are just waiting for an opportunity to show you what they have. I believe that's this guy. The writing is on the wall here. His trainer is Virgil Hunter, one of the best trainers in the sport. I believe he won Trainer of the Year in 2011. Understand Virgil Hunter, in addition to training Andre Ward, right, has also trained Demetrius Andrade. I know Andrade has moved on, right? He, you know, is working with Alfredo Angulo. This guy is one of the premier technicians from the corner in the sport, right? And understand, when you see Brandon Gonzalez fight, it's obvious early on that this is a guy who, if he needs to fight outside, he can fight outside. He can twist and turn an opponent. If he needs to fight inside, he can fight inside. In terms of physical gifts, he has fast hand speed, right? He has a great sense of balance. He'll bend from his waist. Simply put, he has a better jab than James the Gale. Let's face it, the Gale's jab is really a paw. Also, Gonzalez does things like jab you to the body. He doesn't neglect the body, right? This is an advanced fighter. The only thing Gonzalez has been missing has been, until now, the level of competition. Right? Well, his coming out party was against Tommy Ustaisen. The casinos didn't know who he was. Right? Keep in mind, this guy has been in the ring with the best. Right? He's been in the ring numerous times with Andre Ward. Right, so think about it. Who exactly is Gonzalez going to fight where Gonzalez is going to feel he's out of his league? Well, Gonzalez going into that Ustazen fight was something like a six to six and a half to one underdog. Then the fight started. Right, Ustazen is tall. He's six four. You know the rest. Brandon Gonzalez slips the jab, gets inside, starts doing work. Unfortunately, he had the wrong referee, right? The referee wouldn't allow him to do extended work inside, right? So, of course, what does Gonzalez do against a 6'4 opponent? He decides to take it outside. That's the level of talent we're talking about, right? Now, the casinos 
haven't learned from their mistakes. Even though I consider DeGale to be certainly the best at 168 in the United Kingdom. Let me go one step further. Right? I believe DeGale might well be, and this will only be decided in the ring, the best at 168, period. Right? Understand if DeGale were to go to 175, if he were to fight, you know, someone like, let's say, Sergei Kovalev. And you all know, I think, the world of Kovalev. I take the Gale in that fight. Right? I think the Gale is rare in the sport. But even though I consider myself a member of the DeGale fan club, the casino should not have made Brandon Gonzalez a 4 to one underdog. That's ridiculous. Right? Fighters with this level of talent, with guys like Virgil Hunter in their corner, right, should never be a four to one underdog. Let me talk about some more players, because there are a lot of players here in the background, right? One of Gonzalez's promoters is Antonio Leonard, right? I know Tony. Tony's a friend of mine. He's an excellent promoter who cares deeply about his fighters. Tony was one of the promoters with Gary Shaw, who's also involved. Gary's also an excellent promoter. Tony was one of the promoters way back when for the Diego Corrales, Jose Luis Castillo fight. Now, let me just say, for all of us who follow and love boxing, the 10th round of that Castillo Corrales fight from 2005 is as good a round as I have seen in the sport. Right? That's boxing at the top shelf. Right? That's two warriors going at it, both of them bringing their A games, both of them badly hurt, both of them sucking it up. Right? Well, let me just say, I can tell you that Antonio Leonard, and I can tell you that Gonzalez's manager, who's one of the dominant managers in the sport, James Prince, they think the world of Brandon Gonzalez. In other words, you're talking about repeat players in the sport, right? Guys who have been around the block, guys who have a lot of talent in their stable, right? Leonard and Shaw have been literally rounding up a lot of young, bright prospects in the sport of boxing and have been adding them to a very impressive stable of fighters, right? Guys like Eduardo Martinez, guys like Kenneth Sims, these are decorated amateur fighters, right? Understand, these guys know boxing talent when they see it, right? And these guys all believe enough in Brandon Gonzalez to throw him in the ring against James DeGale. Let me just tell you too, I've, I've, I've talked with James Prince about James DeGale. Prince knows how I feel about James DeGale. These guys feel at least as strongly about Brandon Gonzalez. You've heard the term live underdog. Here it is. Forget what Gonzalez's popularity is with the public. At the end of the day, skills pay the bills, right? Let me just say, if Brandon Gonzalez were to fight, let's say, George Groves, I'd probably take Brandon Gonzalez. And let me just say this. People here know I took George Groves in the first crotch fight. I like George Groves in the rematch, right? Gonzalez doesn't have the name but he has the skills. So, to hardcore gamblers, let me just say this. This is a fight you want to tread lightly on. As much as I like DeGale, I'm not hopping in the DeGale end of the pool on this fight. I think DeGale wins the fight. But of course, I'm not going to give leverage to the casino in a fight that I consider to be high risk. Why am I taking the Gale over Gonzalez? 
for a few reasons. Now let me let me say this. The Gale has his problems. You heard me mention his jab, which is really more of a paw than a jab. Let's face it too, the Gale, on a personal level, right, some guys are heroes, some guys are villains. The Gale is not likable. Right? I believe you see some bad guys out there and they're trying to play up and manufacture a bad guy persona. I actually think Floyd Mayweather is really a down-to-earth guy. I don't know Floyd. I'm just a fan. I think uh, Mayweather is a down-to-earth guy who's misunderstood. But, of course, he himself understands that people see him as a villain. So sometimes he takes on a villain persona. So you're watching 24-7 before a Mayweather fight and Mayweather's walking around and taking out wads of cash and stuff like that I believe in part because he knows that sells tickets James the Gale's different <laughs> with Floyd being irritating is it that with James the Gale I just think the Gale is an irritating arrogant individual at times right I myself was uncomfortable looking at the pre-fight hype uh, you know, for the George Groves fight, right? Let's face it, the Gale, even though he has a gold medal from the Olympics, isn't loved, right? Not that Floyd is loved. I don't believe Floyd's loved either. But at least with Floyd, there's more play acting than there is with the Gale. What that means is that there is an opportunity, even on British soil, for a charismatic opponent to win over the crowd against a fighter who won a gold medal for the UK. Think about it. Right? So DeGale's not love. Now DeGale, in a fight I thought he won, the scorekeepers thought he lost. They thought he was beaten outside by George Groves. Right? George Groves was moving around the ring in that fight. Right? He kept DeGale turning. DeGale was baffled for a few rounds. Couldn't figure out how to get Groves to engage him. Was a little bit flat-footed against Groves who was moving. Let me just point out too, if I'm George Groves, I look at that fight for inspiration in the Frotch rematch. Right? Groves should be using his legs. I don't know who fights Carl Frotch and decides they're going to stand there and duke it out with Carl Frotch like George Groves did in the later rounds of their first fight, right? But, be that as it may, the Gale got beaten from the outside officially by George Groves. What I want you to do is to look at the Gale against Peter Wazuski, fight that's a few years old. You'll see the Gale getting beaten up from the inside in that fight. The Gale escaped with the win. Escape is the word, right? The point is there are films of the Gale looking less than exemplary in the ring. No question about it. Also, there's a health concern here. Just like with Sergio Martinez, there's a knee injury concern with James the Gale. The Gale claims now the knee's fully healed, but he himself admits that he went through several fights where he couldn't move like he wanted to. Right? So, that's a problem. But let me say, boxing requires a certain creativity and a certain amount of timing. And you're just not going to find more creativity and more timing and better angles than you do with James DeGale. DeGale also has, even though he comes out as a southpaw, I suspect that he's either ambidextrous or right-handed in real life. DeGale's able to switch between righty, excuse me, lefty and righty and understand he's that fighter who can pull off the switch. He seems to be two-legged, right? Most guys, you can tell when they're fighting against their dominant hand, right? You can tell when a righty is fighting lefty and when a lefty is fighting righty. With the Gale, it's hard to tell because the Gale's footwork is remarkable both ways. Right, this is a guy who has an unorthodox style of fighting. It's very unorthodox, but yet he has honed it to the point where he's a master and he's effective. So I feel that as good as Brandon Gonzalez is, as well trained by Virgil Hunter as Brandon Gonzalez is, he's in with a one-of-a-kind talent. 
who's almost impossible to prepare for, who has a style who really is singular, and whose sense of timing and ability to throw withering body punches to fight backing up, right? The Gale not only can fight with his back up on the ropes, he can kill you while he's backing up, right? A guy with the kind of, uh, I don't know, hard to predict attack of James the Gale. I, I really view the Gale as uh, just one of those outside the box type guys who only come along once every few years. So, to sum up, I think this is a dangerous fight to bet on. I expect the Gale to win the fight, but I expect Brandon Gonzalez to look a lot better than people expect. If I had a gun to my head and I had to bet on this fight, because I'm looking for value, because I'm looking for leverage, because I don't want to have money on one guy expecting only a 20% return, because I'd rather the casino pay me a 400% return, I believe the value side of this play is with the unknown challenger, Brandon Gonzalez. In any event, let me just say, I'm expecting this to be a higher level of boxing, this match, than Groves Frotch. Right, I think Frotch is cagey, but I feel if Groves comes in and just uses the gifts that God gave him, the hand speed, the foot speed, the power, right, the coordination, Groves should win that fight. This fight is more cerebral to me. It's more problematical, right? You're going to have two guys in the ring dealing with angles, right? Two guys who can fight many styles, right? If you're just looking at the, at the sport as an art, this the Gale Gonzalez fight is where you need to look on this boxing card. Just like, by the way, in my opinion, the Ray Beltran Ushmani fight it's going to be the way to look at the Bradley Pacquiao boxing card. Let me hear from you. I particularly want to hear from fans of Brandon Gonzalez. Right? I, uh, because I know that there are many in the sport who believe big time in him. Right? I believe it's important for the public to hear about him. Because I, I'm not sure with these odds if the public has. Right. Also, I want to hear from those in the UK about Groves, Frotch, and the Gale. Where do they see it all falling out? Let me point out, if the Gale beats Gonzalez, I'll be taking him against whoever wins that Frotch-Groves fight. That's even with Fra uh, Groves officially already having a win over the Gale. Let me hear from you. Also, if you're a DeGale skeptic, tell us why. What part of his game don't you like? Thanks for stopping by.